Hey again, everybody. We're going to talk here about something that you're going to see over and over and over again in the outpatient clinic. It is a uh, very problematic disorder in men, and that is erectile dysfunction. And this is problematic because this drastically reduces the quality of life for many, many men. And so you can expect to be asked about this because erectile dysfunction actually has a uh, pretty unique workup because it is associated with a variety of other very common pathologies. And so those are things that we need to rule out in any patient who comes to the clinic complaining of difficulty obtaining or maintaining an erection. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or in the i button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And definitely subscribe to my channel and you will get notifications every time I put a new video up. So we all know what erectile dysfunction is. Erectile dysfunction is the inability to get or to maintain an erection uh, that's sufficient for sexual performance. Now, a lot of times we think of erection, either you have an erection or you don't. And in many cases, and men, you know this, um, you can have a semi, <laughs> you know, where you've got, uh, there is, some engorgement of, of the uh, corpora cavernosa, uh, but you don't have a full-on erection. And that is not good enough for penetrative sex. So uh, we need to ask about that too. Are you getting any blood into your, well, we wouldn't put it that way. Are you getting any kind of erection? Is your penis changing at all? Um, or uh, do you um, not have any uh, erection whatsoever. Um, so that's an important question to ask. More about that later. Um, although ED does increase in prevalence with age, ED is not considered part of the normal aging process. So we do not consider this normal aging. We do not send a patient who comes in complaining of difficulty with intercourse and say, well, uh, you're 70, that's just life. We do not do that, okay? So that could be actually a wrong answer choice on the exam, so watch out for that. Um, in the U.S., some degree of erectile difficulty is reported by half of men aged 40 to 70. So that is a lot of people. Now, whether or not they come in to get treatment is another issue altogether because there is a lot of uh, stigma around talking about sex. And that comes from both the physician and the patient standpoint. It is our responsibility as providers to make sure that we are initiating that conversation. Erectile dysfunction may represent a sentinel symptom of occult cardiovascular and peripheral vascular disease, which are very common in this same patient population. Now, I will say, and I'm not going to go over this in too great of detail, but it is always important to uh, sharpen your skills at taking a good sexual history. Do not hesitate to practice on your patients. Um, it's, it's a good thing to know. Sexual health uh, intersects with many different um, many different areas of health. Um, so it intersects with psychiatric health. It intersects with cardiovascular health. It intersects with diabetes. Um, so we need to keep all those in mind. To say nothing of the endocrine causes of ED as well, which we'll get more into. So the way I like to approach talking about sex is to first ask the patient if they're sexually active. If they're not sexually active, you really don't need to talk a whole lot more about it. If they do say um, that they aren't sexually active, it's a good idea to ask them if they've ever been sexually active. Um, and if so, is it with men, women, or both? Um if they are sexually active, then you do need to ask that question. Are you sexually active with men, women, or both? We do not ask, are you gay, straight, or bisexual? Because there are men and women who identify as straight who, you know, maybe engage in same-sex sexual activity from time to time. And so uh, how you identify as far as sexual orientation may not correspond to your 
activities. And so that's important for you to uh, for you to ask and to phrase it that way. And then it's important to ask if they're s satisfied with their sex life because men with ED are universally going to tell you that they are not satisfied. And then there are some questionnaires. This is the IIEF5. Five because there's five questions. This is very easy. You don't need to know this for the exam, uh, but there are these questionnaires that can help us. And you know what I really like about these questionnaires personally is it takes some of the awkwardness away, um, both for you, but more importantly for the patient, where they may be staring at their feet and I want to volunteer this information. And when you put it on paper for them, you're more likely to get honest responses. Now, there are a number of causes of erectile dysfunction. I'm not going to run through all of these, but I do want to point out that the most common cause is vasculogenic. So that can be due to atherosclerosis, for instance. It can be a sign of diabetes, which, of course, we can have vascular and neurologic complications. It may be associated with medications. The big one is SSRIs. Uh, neurogenic, um, that can be associated with a variety of neurologic disorders. Endocrine. Um, this is a little less common. And then psychogenic, very common. You need to really be honing in on psychogenic ED in young men. If they're under 40 and they're coming in with ED, you've got to be thinking that this is psychogenic, but we still need to rule out uh, some of these other causes. And how do we do that? Um, so, of course, you're getting your full h &P. You've got to ask about morning erections because if a patient is capable of getting having an erection in the morning, it happens all the time, right? Uh, men know you wake up and often you have an erection for no reason. Um, so if they do obtain erections in the morning, morning wood, uh, then that pretty much excludes a vascular cause. And it's more than likely you're dealing with ED because there's uh, psychogenic ED rather, uh, because there's no physiologic problem. Uh, it's important to get a fasting lipid panel, a fasting blood glucose and A1C, especially if they have risk factors, and then get a serum testosterone and a serum prolactin and do further workup for any suspected underlying cause. The cornerstone of management is the PDE5 inhibitors. Um, that includes Viagra, um, which is sildenafil, was the first PDE5 inhibitor to come out. Um, now, with this, it is very important that you know that if a patient is on nitrates, let's say they've got angina, uh, you cannot give these drugs. It will precipitate a dangerous drop in blood pressure, and so you cannot use these with nitrates. Um, if they are on other antihypertensives, you need to use with, with, with very significant caution. And there are a number of contraindications for PDE5 inhibitors. Of course, con concurrent use of nitrates if they've had a heart attack within the past three months or a stroke within the last six months. There's a number of contraindications. You don't need to memorize these, but I would know these ones in the red. Okay, so how do we manage these patients? Well, first of all, you need to treat the underlying condition because these first two, which are very common in older men, um, you know, they can kill you if they're out of control. I mean, if you have type 2 diabetes and it's not under control, you know all the problems that can come from that. Hyperlipidemia, you know, you're a ticking time bomb for coronary artery disease and a heart attack or a stroke. So you've got to get those under control. Um, then there's these other causes, hormonal disturbances, you'll send them off to endocrinology, Peyronie disease, you'll send them off to urology. If it's psychogenic, so you've got a young man coming in and he's got morning erections, that's not a problem, it's just performance. Um, you can do this penile tumescence test, but personally, if a guy comes in and says, I get erections in the morning, I mean, I believe him. Why are you going to lie about that? So, I mean, I wouldn't even bother with this, although it does exist. Um, so what would we do for psychogenic ED? Well, we don't need to do any treating of the underlying condition. We'll send them to psychotherapy. That can be good for anyone. But I will give them a PDE5 inhibitor. I will give them a sildenafil or a tadalafil because these are very safe medications. Um, if you don't have other medications that interact with them, they're very, very safe. And often you'll get a placebo effect. Um, so, um, you know, just giving them something that makes them you know, calm down, chill out, you're going to perform, you're going to be fine. That's often enough. Um, so um, now there is a important difference. It's worth knowing. So we have sildenafil, which is Viagra, and Tadalafil, 
which is Cialis. Um, now, what is the difference? Well, sildenafil or Viagra is now generic, so it's cheaper. Um, however, sildenafil, you have to take it within an hour before sex, and it only lasts about four hours. So that's kind of difficult because, you know, sometimes you get in the mood all of a sudden, and if that's it, it's then Viagra is not going to work. Tadalafil, on the other hand, uh, that works for up to 36 hours after the dose. So you can take this, you know, every day or every other day, and you're set to go. Uh, unfortunately, Tadalafil is more expensive. So to recap, ED is the inability to achieve or maintain an erection significant for, uh, or su sufficient for sexual performance. Uh, the incidence increases with age, but is not considered part of the normal aging process. It is uh, a sentinel symptom of cardiovascular disease in many cases, so make sure and get a lipid panel, screen them for hyperlipidemia, screen them for diabetes. There are various causes. In older men, it's usually vascular. In younger men, it's usually psychogenic. Remember the possibility of medication side effects. Um, and then remember to ask anyone, do you get morning erections? Because if they do, then it is more than likely psychogenic. Morning erections are a great indicator of good vascular health. A workup, we talked about management, PD-5 inhibitor. Remember, we do not give it with nitrates. We do not give it for patients who have recently had a stroke or an MI, and congestive heart failure is another contraindication if it is very severe.